And good morning to my Northampton uh, community television audience. This is Rick Haggerty kicking it for peace, culture, and education. Airing on Valley Free Radio 103.3 FM each Sunday morning from 8 to 10 a.m. And that was uh, Helen Hummel, a guest of my show. And uh, what a great uh, what a great tune. And we've got Bruce Watson on the line uh, speaking about his uh uh, article uh, from his uh, online nude mag- magazine, The Attic, and you can check that out at theattic.space. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, Rick. How are you doing? All right. How are you today? Pretty good. I'm just back from Baltimore, where I went for a variety of reasons and uh, discovered a museum that some of your listeners might know. Um, that's what I'll be talking about. Fantastic. And that's the article is called Art with a Heart. Why don't you tell us all about it? Okay. Uh, Art museums can be somber places. All that angst, all that ambition, all that money. A stroll through MoMA is a lesson in the art business as much as art history. But here at the edge of Baltimore's Inner Harbor, one museum has a vision. Perhaps you know nothing about art, but know what you like. And step into the old Baltimore Copper Paint Building and see if you like... A 16-foot Lusitania, the ship, made from 194,000 toothpicks. And there's a picture of it, and I saw it, and it's <laughs> simply incredible. A cabinet of Pez dispensers. A 1970s muscle car festooned with blue milk of magnesia bottles. Or exhibitions entitled High on Life, Wind in My Hair, The Big Hope Show, and All Things Round, Galaxies, Eyeballs, and Karma. The American Visionary Art Museum has a vision, all right. And that vision doesn't much care whether you like the art, whether you say my kid could do that, whether you even consider it art. Opened in 1995 and instantly hailed as one of the most fantastic museums anywhere in America, AVAM, as I'm going to call it, A-V-A-M, has sculpted its own image ever since. AVAM is America's home for art brut. Excuse my French. That means raw art. The term was coined by French sculptor Jean de Buffet in a, a contemporary Picasso who turned from early success to the art of outcasts, mental patients, children, prisoners, and self-taught artists. Uh, this type of art, de Buffet says, celebrates works created from solitude and from pure, authentic, creative impulses. De Buffet is the patron saint of this museum, but its guiding light is founder Rebecca Alban Hoffenberger. Once hailed as the P.T. Barnum of the art world, Hoffenberger is as colorful as Avam's walls. Born in the Baltimore suburb, she dodged college in the late 60s to study mime in Paris. What followed was a kaleidoscopic vision, uniquely her own. Marriages, daughters, and a stint on the 70s post hippie trail led Hoffenberger to Boulder, to Mexico, and back, dabbling in psychic arts, ballet, and humanitarian aid. Then in 1985, she visited Dubé's uh, museum in Lausanne, Switzerland. Here was art, not just with a mind, but with a heart. Not some fine sculpture by someone trained in the academy. Not another ab- abstract worth untold millions. This was art, as Hoffenberger describes it, made by farmers, housewives, mechanics, the disabled, the homeless, all inspired by the fire within. Returning to America, Hoffenberger focused her kaleidoscope on an idea. Why not start a raw art museum in that bastion of Bohemia, Baltimore? Hoffenberg convinced city officials to donate a site a mile from where Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Donations of grants followed, and in November 1985, the museum opened. Its collection began with 400 works by mental patients and has since expanded to 4,000 items. Dozens are on display in two converted warehouses. And as original as the art itself are the artist's bios. Many tell tragic tales, not of art school, but of reform school jail, abuse, and alcohol. But beside each bio is each visionary's answer and antidote, art. Some of it is raw, but much of it is beautiful or beautifully different. And all of its art, all of it follows the museum's core value, never bore, enchant. Hoffenberg admits to having, quote, no background in the arts. Everything I do is intuitive. Her intuition led her to hire guest curators for each rotating exhibition. From Tree of Life to What Makes Us Smile, each exhibition explores one grand, quote, one grand spirited theme that has inspired or bedeviled humankind from the get-go. And each exhibit unfolds in galleries replete with a bartlets of quotations. The current show, Parenting, and Art Without a Manual, cites wisdom from Einstein, Rumi, Betty Davis, Tolstoy, Aesop, and the TV show The Big Bang Theory, and many more. 
The art world, however, has not been amused. Some dismissed Hoffenberger's taste as splashy, loud, cute, and funny. True to her vision, she doesn't care. I have no interest in being a player in the art world, she told the New York Times. The museum will never become, quote, a repository for dead objects that we're supposed to revere because someone says there were some. <laughs> Avan's vision also involves... I wish I'd gotten a meter, by the way, but I just, uh, Evans' vision also involves the community. The museum has hired the homeless, helped at-risk kids make murals, and helped Baltimore become one of America's wackiest cities. And, and the attic has a list, by the way, by the way, of the ten wackiest cities. Baltimore, I think, nice. is number seven. Evans is beloved for hosting parties, weddings, all-night goddess sleepovers, and an annual kinetic sculpture race that sends human-powered dragons and other delights careening along the inner harbor. This year's race with prizes to both the grand mediocre East Coast champion and the next-to-last finisher, is on May 4th. So you don't like the world's first family of robots? Maybe a giant gold hand makes you long for Monet's water lilies? The artists here don't care. They didn't make art for you. They made it to match their visions. Visionaries, Hoppenberg said, perceive potential and creative, creative relationships where most of us don't. Without visionaries... Willingness to be called fools, to make mistakes, to be wrong. Few new right things would ever be burst. <laughs> what a great, what a great article. Oh, boy, that, that, it's uh, a great place. If you get down to Baltimore, there's, yeah. um, I, I mean, it's uh, definitely worth a trip. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I love the quote uh, about the... Uh, uh, a repository for dead objects. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, I think museums are a little more than that. But let's, yeah, uh, yeah. But let's face it, the, the spirit here is great. Uh, and, yeah. uh, parenthood. Uh, I yeah. there before. I would have wanted to become a pretty heroine. <laughs> Harrowing tales, Scary. <laughs> uh, but um, but they're also very. Everything is really very, very uh, powerful and heartfelt. So that's. Yeah, yeah. You get, I mean, it looks like, and in the picture, it just oh, that looks like some. Uh, you know, just which in itself would be incredible. But, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Toothpicks, but it's crazy. Just all, as you get close, every single thing is just a toothpick, and it's 16 feet long and four giant smokestacks, you know, red and black. Yeah. I thought it was a Titanic at first. It's back to these... They're big showcase, I guess. But there's so many to see in another room, and uh, in another different rooms and that's fantastic now what did uh, it was being a group of people uh, well, he was a reverend and he oh, okay. sort of began painting it is it's picture of the red sea parting yes yeah. it's in the uh, carousel pictures and um it's and filled with the Israelites going through and uh each one and and, and uh, that he the whole room of his work containing in and now that I'm back I couldn't be more scared in my life you know looking yeah. at this little child there um, yeah. yeah and then one at the very bottom uh, there's a photo of one I found quite interesting apparently this is an old Baltimore tradition you see a screen door and uh, steps and everything just looks like I took it outside but it was in the museum and apparently in the 1910s some people started painting screens in Baltimore and at one point oh, there was something like yeah. 100,000 painted screens um, all over the uh, neighborhoods in Baltimore and it's it's really nice you wouldn't know it was a screen it looks like a canvas so you get yeah, it close yeah absolutely and it is and that was a very nice exhibit too yeah that's I love that uh, outdoor scene um, mm -hmm. you know painted onto a screen um, it reminds yeah. me of uh, I've got a painting of uh, uh, doors, a uh, door in Italy, you know, and it's just, uh, you've just got uh, the screen. It's walking up to someone's home and there's artwork <laughs> you know, right there yeah. on, the, on the screen. So that's, and, and uh, yeah. There are a lot of, I've done articles on other uh, 
folks who follow the attic know that uh, a good portion of Attic on the Road, which is a feature that I do whenever I travel, uh, is on folk art. I have an article on the Watts Towers in Los Angeles, which I just are just unbelievable, fantastic uh, 100-foot towers built by one man. And the Cadillac Ranch is maybe not quite so folky, but um, and and uh, Philadelphia's Magic Gardens are somewhat similar and, and this incredible sprawling mosaic. So I love folk art as much as anything, and uh, this is different than folk art. This is a little different. It's a little more, um, well, first of all, there's a curated show uh, every every other month, and then also uh, this is there's a little bit of an edge to this, a little more than folk art, and that's, and that's uh, so, but there is some folk art in it as well. Outstanding. So um, Bruce has mentioned uh, The Attic, and that is his online new, news magazine. So please uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe there. And that means you receive uh, one email a week about uh, uh, new articles. And that's at theattic.space. It's really great stuff. And uh, uh, it's you're doing a great thing here, Bruce. Uh, I'm really loving it. Every week there's something new and and interesting, and this is uh, another example of it uh, right here. So thanks, uh, well, um, thanks for having me on. Yeah, sure thing. Um, and again, uh, Bruce Watson at the Attic dot Space, and we'll see you in a few weeks since uh, I'll be uh, I'll be away, uh, but we'll uh, reconnect then. Yeah, we certainly will. I'll have a couple more articles uh, I can pick and choose by then. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, Bruce. You take care. Enjoy the spring. Thanks, Rick. All right, man. Yeah, bye-bye. Okay, so that's uh, Bruce Watson. And I want to say uh, thank you again to our Northampton uh, community television audience for tuning in. Rick Haggerty, kicking it for peace, culture, and education here at Valley Free Radio, FM Northampton. And you can catch our Valley Free Radio shows on uh, NCTV, uh, being uh, broadcast uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, 3.30 or 4 p.m. Not every week, but uh, we're doing our best to uh, keep uh, uh, keep Al and Dave uh, uh, busy over there. And thanks so much. So uh, we'll sign off there.